Look, everyone wants to scale up an online business, and a big problem that a lot of people come out is burnout. Because people bury themselves into the ground. But what if I told you it didn't have to be like that? I'm gonna take you through five proven strategies that can help you scale your business without destroying yourself, your relationships, and your life. Let's get into it. Number one is automating repetitive tasks. Now, one of your best friends in terms of automating tasks is gonna be a tool called Zapier. Zapier is essentially a software system that connects different apps and platforms together. And you can essentially actually automate anything in your business. Anywhere you need information sent between different software systems, Zapier can do this and automate tasks. Whether it's messaging, sending client data over, and one of the big things in particular I see with clients who are selling fitness programs is their processes are too manual when it comes to onboarding new clients. So one of the first things you need to scale is the onboarding system to be automated. So you need this to be seamless in terms of it just happens, rather than someone manually having to do it. And that's where you need to get yourself out of doing the donkey work and get the software to do it for you. And this is where Zapier is one of these great tools. Another one would be Calendly, which is very good in terms of actually allowing you to book in calls which are convenient at times for you, which you can integrate into Zapier also. These all link via Google and it can be put into a Google Calendar as well. And this is one of the best ways in terms of how you need to run your business and your life to make sure things happen on autopilot. Number two is delegating like a pro. Now, if you want to remain poor, when you come to the supermarket to buy things like your donuts, which you should be doing to get jacked, that's a joke, you definitely don't buy the donuts. Doing your own shopping is gonna keep you poor. So there's a couple of things you should be doing. You should be looking to delegate these things, buy online or get someone else to do it. If you live in Dubai, use InstaShop. If you live in the UK, use Tesco's. If you live in the US, use Walmart, use everyone you want. Don't go food shopping. But the most important thing is, Everything in your personal life you want to try and delegate off. So whether it's like cleaning your car, cutting your grass, cleaning your house, find someone else to do that for you because what you want to do is actually use your time in two ways. One, enjoying yourself. Two, is making money and growing your business. If you have a business where you actually make any money at all, you can pay someone to do your shopping for you, clean your house, clean your car, and you will get way more out of your time by working on your business, which is going to change your life and your client's life. Now, if you're looking to delegate things within your business, don't just dump these on other people. It's really important that tasks are actually given out correctly. We use a system on Notion, which is a project management software. A couple of big tips for this. Give people a due date of when the thing needs to be done by, how urgent it is, any resources and links to the thing, and make it as clear as possible. If things aren't done correctly and you've delegated to someone else, that's ultimately your responsibility. So you've done a very poor job in terms of actually explaining what the task is that needs to be done. Now, if you're not sure in terms of how to delegate, one of the best ways to do this, actually, whatever the task is, record a Loom video of you doing it and give that to the person so they understand how to do it for the next time. Number three is focusing on high leverage activities. So there's something called the Pareto Principle, which is essentially where 80% of results come from 20% of the actions. And these 20% of things are normally from high leverage activities. So an example of some things that are low leverage, which you want to avoid. And these are generally when you're going to be in a one-to-one -one scenario with a customer or a client or even a team member. One would be doing client check-ins or setting clients up. Two would be doing sales calls. Three would be training team members one-to-one. -one. We want to avoid doing one-to-one -one things because these are not and let you actually scale the business quickly. We want to focus on doing one to many. So if you think about how you could do this in different manners, one would be hire coaches to do your fulfillment. Two, you have phone closers who sell for you. Number three, when it comes to training your team, what we do is we have video courses that team members can go through, Loom videos where everything is an SOP in the library. So anything that needs to be done, there's already a document that shows them how to do this. And this makes it easier for them to then execute without someone having to personally get involved in teaching the thing. And this is where the next thing you need to do is sit down and work out what the high leverage activities are you need to do in your business and spend 80% of your time doing this. And these are things that are gonna focus on building the business, not working in the business. And when you're doing the high leverage activities, the most important thing you can do is this. Focus on doing those first thing in the morning, so working on the business, and then the afternoon, focus on working in the business. Doing any sales calls you have to, any one-to-one -one stuff then, but use your most powerful part of your brain first thing in the morning. Number four is setting boundaries and actually using time blocking. So one of the most important things you need to do is actually make sure you plan in times when you're going to be traveling, enjoying yourself and not working. So you should have seasons where you work really, really hard and seasons you work less. So one of the things I'd recommend you do with this is you use like a sprint methodology. So generally I'll try and sprint for like four to six weeks, get loads of shit done. I then try and take it easier for a week or two and then repeat that. And that's a really good way in terms of having boundaries throughout the year to break it up and almost have a gamification process for this. Another good way to do this is even using the app called Opal, which is really good in terms of blocking your own certain apps on your phone. If you find it constantly getting distracted, getting stimulated, and you can't stay on task, that is a really good way to actually stop you physically being able to open maybe Instagram, Slack, WhatsApp. 
Number five is building a scalable mindset. Now, what does this essentially mean? How can you build processes and pieces of your business which have zero involvement from you? And this is a scalable process where you can remove yourself from the system. So for example, in seven figure scaling systems and in our fitness business, someone going from being booked in as a call or coming in as a lead, being booked as a call to our sales calls, and then becoming a coaching client and then being coached, has absolutely nothing to do with me in the process. So that is a scalable system and that's how you have a scalable mindset because you look for where you're involved in the system and you try and pull yourself out, put someone else into it or automate it with some type of software. And you need to have this approach with everywhere else in your life, whether it be your personal life, be your business. In your personal life, one easy way to to do this is hiring assistants to do a lot of the personal crap for you whether it be like travel arrangements fixing your car whatever it is get it arranged so having that scalable mindset is the big thing that's going to take you to the next level so here you have it the five things you need to focus on to have a scalable business without burning yourself out automating delegating focus setting boundaries and then having a scalable mindset it's about doing it in a way that makes you happy and not doing bs that you shouldn't be doing if you took value from this video make sure you smash the like button hit the subscribe and comment with any questions and we'll see you next video soon